When's the last time your power went out? How long was it out? Hurricane Sandy left us in the dark. With no backup, I had to squeeze food into my mother-in-law's freezer. In California, outages can last for one or two days. During the Texas Arctic blast, ERCOT's average outage was 42 hours. For Sandy, some had to wait two weeks. While we work to improve our grid, we can do our part by preparing for disasters and emergencies. Ready.gov shares all sorts of tips for preparedness. Do you have a backup supply of food and water? For some, a backup supply of power is just as critical. If you rely on a ventilator to breathe, backup power isn't a convenience. It's what keeps you alive. HHS.gov shows that more than 2.9 million Americans rely on electricity for their medical devices. In general, most people like to be as resilient as they can. I've got gallons of frozen blueberries, corn, tomatoes, and all sorts of things from my garden, and a fridge full of pickles. The last thing I want is to lose it all. There are various ways to prepare. Generators have been our go-to for backup power. How else could you run your power saws? I mean, if you need to make peanut butter and your power is out, how could you run your high-speed blender? Well, many people are looking to power stations as a new option for off-grid power. This power station is from Alcatel, their P2001. How does it compare to generators or other types of backup systems? What's the best way to use it? Whether it's work, emergencies, or just for fun, I'll show what you need to know if you're considering a power station and how different models stack up. Normally, I focus on gardening, but with this product sample, I can talk about something that's been on my mind. There are lots of specialized channels with in-depth technical reviews, but my focus is on helping viewers who are less familiar with this tech. To get started, this includes an independent, unpaid review. I've received this product at no cost, but I have no special agreement with Alcatel. If you think a power station is a good fit for you, pick the one you want. I just want to share some factors to consider. So, what is a portable power station? It's a super high capacity battery pack or power bank. It simply holds a charge and then delivers it later on demand. You can use these little power banks to top off your cell phone, but this concept has evolved into devices that are easily 20 times more powerful. Rather than powering a little LED light for a few hours, you can run a full-size refrigerator for a whole day. How do power stations compare to generators? This model calls itself a solar generator, and many product listings say that. By itself, it's not. Hook up a solar panel, and yes, the complete system is a solar generator, but without the panel, it's just a battery bank or power station. Some people try to push power stations as a complete replacement for gas generators. Depending on your usage, that might be true. Power stations are much easier to operate, they require less maintenance, and they're a lot safer. You can easily lend a power station to a friend or family member without worrying about carbon monoxide poisoning or some other hazard. When you think about it, tens of millions of people can't use a gas generator. City and apartment dwellers may have no safe place to operate one. For them, power stations might be their best bet. Still though, they do have their limitations. With a gas generator, if you keep adding fuel, you'll have an endless supply of power. But with a power station, you need to be smart. It's better to view it as a completely new product category. At times, it can fill the role of a generator, but not always. In fact, sometimes both devices can be used together with excellent results. What are some situations where a power station would come in handy? It's a great fit for off-the-grid situations in an RV or cabin. Even on camping trips, some parks don't allow fires during wildfire season, so this helps a lot. It can also help out in booths at festivals and fairs. A 2000 watt hour power station can do lots of things on the job. It can run construction tools. It's an easy way to recharge your battery packs. It's also great for camera and AV equipment in the field or keeping drone batteries charged. In the home office, if you're teleworking and the grid goes down, 
this could get you through an 8 hour workday, or even more depending on your system specs. A small battery bank can keep your mobile devices charged for a while. But large capacity power stations can power fridges and freezers preventing your food from spoiling. If a high watt power station can run this microwave without any problem, it should be able to handle most other appliances too. You can boil water for tea or use an electric blanket to keep warm. I'm not sure if it's worth it, but I was able to run a small air conditioner for four hours. Most critically, a portable power station can back up your medical equipment. Home dialysis equipment, infusion pumps, and medication nebulizers, CPAP, BiPAP, and mechanical ventilators will get a big boost in backup time. Let's say your device draws about 50 watts. The P2001 would run the entire night with no issues. You may get up to 24 hours of running time, depending on your device. It could also be used to recharge power wheelchair batteries. If it requires electricity, then a power station can keep it going. Understanding the need for backup power, some people will get entire home generators or super high capacity backups like a Tesla Powerwall. These will help you while you're at home. But what if you need to evacuate? A portable power station can keep things powered even if you spend hours tied up in traffic. Let's take a closer look at this one. The P2001 is fairly compact and sturdy, weighing 48 pounds. It's hefty, but still quite portable. The easiest and fastest way to charge it is through the AC input. But the unit also has an Anderson connector allowing for simultaneous DC input. That might be through the included car outlet cable in your vehicle or by using the solar panel input cable. The display lights up when the system detects an input. With pass-through charging, this can remain plugged in for charging while also powering devices. As long as your connected devices are under 1100 watts. On the front, there are two input sections. Push the button enabling this circuit to charge USB devices. This circuit is for your 12 volt DC connections. Then finally, on this side, we have six 20 amp AC plugs, which are powered by a 110 volt inverter. These can power some fairly high wattage devices and appliances. If you want to use this as a solar generator, you can select any compatible panel array. I bought this Boulder portable solar panel for demonstration. This system can accept an input of up to 500 watts, but pay attention to the voltage and amp limits for multiple panels in parallel versus serial. A nice feature with this Alcatel is the UPS function. I have several APC backups to protect my electrical equipment. As soon as the power goes out, they instantly switch to battery power, keeping systems up and running. But depending on the power draw, you might not have much time before you need to shut things down. The P2001 serves the same function, switching to battery within 10 milliseconds, but it has 15 times the capacity, handling up to 1100 watts of load. So instead of minutes of runtime, you're looking at hours of operation on backup. Anytime you have a load on this power station, the display shows the estimated remaining runtime. You can see the current load in watts. If this device is also being charged, you'll see the input wattage above, and the unit shows how many minutes until fully charged. At any point, if you need to see the current charge remaining, the percentage is right there in the center. That's the basics. What are the important specs to know for a power station or generator? To start, you need to know how much power it can output. This lets you know the size of appliances it can handle and how many. That's the constant wattage output that can be supplied for a continuous load. This may also be referred to as running or rated watts. Some devices create a short power spike when started. That's what this second spec is for, the peak or surge power, also known as the starting watts. This tells how much your system can briefly handle before the connected devices overload it. Compared to my large generator, these power stations just don't have that level of output. But compared to a smaller inverter generator, the P2001 can run just as many devices. For how long though? 
That's the big question. I've seen tool companies push their power station as a replacement for gas generators. They show how much load the system can handle, but fail to say how long the battery can run. Yes, your power station might be able to run a six horsepower shop vac connected to a portable table saw, but for how long? That rated capacity spec is listed as watt hours. This is what lets you estimate runtime. The Alcatel P2001 is rated at 2000 watt hours or two kilowatt hours. So if you had a 2000 watt device connected, it could run it for one hour. Or if it was 200 watts, then 10 hours. In theory, anyway. In real life, these power stations don't really output the watt hours listed in their specs. Usually you get from 75 to 85% of that. For example, in real world tests, the P2001 only outputs 1600 watt hours. There are a couple other limitations to be aware of. When you turn on a power station, the circuits are activated, the display lights up, and fans may kick on. This creates a parasitic draw on your system. There's a small trickle of power that never makes it to your connected devices. During short periods of usage, it's not that much. For example, you could run a high watt toaster oven to roast some peppers. On broil, this toaster draws 700 watts, which is no problem. 20 minutes later, the peppers are done. The toaster has used 233 watt hours, while the power station itself used a really small fraction of power. But if you connect a 15 watt bulb, there's a dramatically larger proportion of resources being used just to run the power station. It might be worth it if you're keeping your modem running, but ultimately this parasitic draw can dramatically reduce your runtime without any real load. If you leave the circuit on with the AC circuit active, you'll lose your entire charge after about 83 hours. This makes it difficult to accurately estimate runtimes of low wattage loads over very long times. On paper, you might expect a light bulb to run for 100 hours, but in real life, it's more like 36 hours. In a critical 24 to 48 hour period, this power station can be a lifesaver. It's perfect if you're using it for short bursts, but for longer extended uses, plan on either topping it off with some solar panels, a generator, or some other power source. When estimating power demands, a kilowatt meter measures exactly how many watts your appliance uses. This is an easy way to ensure you don't overload the system, keeping those running watts under 2000. The meter helps a little with runtime estimations. This homemade air filter runs at a set load, making it easy to estimate the watt hour consumption in theory. But if you already own the power station, it estimates the runtime for you. On constant loads, you can trust the device's estimates more than simple math. Then there are things like refrigerators and freezers, which cycle on and off. You need to track the power over time. This wattage meter checks that too. Once plugged in, a timer starts and it begins tracking kilowatt hours. My fridge used 1.52 kilowatt hours after 24 hours. So I hoped my power station could run it that long. In my tests though, it lasted over 20 hours. The combined use of two chest freezers was 1.58 kilowatt hours for a day, but running both together, I only got 18 and a half hours on my power station. I'm happy with the runtimes I got. This would help immensely in an outage, but you need to be aware that there will be some losses. While these meters are useful, they can't perfectly predict your power station runtime. The lower the device wattage, the longer the runtime, the more losses you'll observe. Part of this results from the inverter. It converts the current to AC for these standard plug outlets. There are less system losses using the DC plugs, so use those ports when possible rather than AC, and you'll make the most of your runtime. One of the things I really like about the Alcatel model is that you can supercharge it in under two hours. So in a situation with rolling blackouts, you don't need much time to top it off when the power comes on. Then if it goes off again, you can keep your critical devices going. 
This model could slowly siphon off energy from a gas generator, which could then be used during off hours. But that fast charge never kicked in during my testing. Of course, if you add solar panels, you can supplement standard AC charging, topping it off even faster. For disaster preparedness, I don't assume I'll get much charge. You can't predict what the weather's going to do. Anything I can get from solar is just a bonus. As a quick test, I put my panel out for 8 hours. In the morning, my power station was at 12%. By the evening, that number went up to 29%. I estimate that to be 270 watt hours. To fully utilize this as a solar generator, shoot for 4 or 500 watts in panels. The battery chemistry is also a big selling point. These lithium batteries are iron phosphates. Not only are they much safer and stable than other lithium ions, but they are also easier to store. As I said earlier, I'm simply showing the model I have for demonstration, but there are lots of power station makers out there. So how does the P2001 compare? Let's check its specs against five other models in the same price or performance category. You can see the total watt hours each unit is rated for along with its real-world testing results. These each have their own running or constant wattage capacities, and there's that max starting surge or peak wattage. When you compare the price, you can see how each of these stacks up. My favorite way of assessing value for a power station is to figure out what you're paying per watt hour. In this regard, the Alcatel unit is an extremely good value. It doesn't have the highest watt hour capacity on the market, but for the price you pay, it's a solid option. Then as you dig deeper, you can look at other features as well. How fast do you want to be able to recharge it? What about longevity? Different manufacturers offer different warranties. Lithium NMC batteries will not support as many charge cycles, while the lithium iron phosphate batteries last a lot longer. How big are you on solar charging? Each unit has its own max solar input capacity. As long as you're getting a good value, it's impossible to overbuy on these units. You'll never regret having extra capacity. At the same time, do you need something under 50 pounds? Each power station has unique specs. Are there certain ports or outlets you'd like to have? I think the UPS feature is something worth considering. I hope this helps you select the best fit for you. The P2001 is an excellent option for emergencies. The LFP battery can sit in a fully charged state, ready to go when you need it. It has plenty of output for your critical devices, helping to sustain you over 24 hours. Then you can supercharge it at a really fast rate, getting it back to work. At the price point, it's an excellent value. In the description, with my link, you'll find a code to bring the price down even lower, making it an even better deal. For my usage, I've been really pleased with the P2001 and I can't think of any reason not to recommend it. It's sturdy, solid, and easy to use. Plenty of outputs for your devices. The UPS function makes it really versatile. I like that you don't have an external charging brick. Just be aware that the included cable is 14 gauge, rated for high amps. Don't switch it with some cheap, poor quality one. This has inlet and outlet fans, which may kick on from time to time to keep the circuitry cool. Not any louder than a PC, but consider those fans on a construction site. I wouldn't run it in a super dusty environment. I was especially pleased with the butternut squash carrying tray included in the box. And when I looked further, I found a second tray, which seems to be for onions. I'm sure I'll get lots of use out of them too. Whether you opt for a power station or not, I recommend that everyone consider some form of backup power. That's absolutely critical for people who rely on electric medical devices. It's good to have a plan if you need a shelter in place, but also, Know what you'll do if you get an evacuation order. The more prepared we are for basic emergency situations, the easier it will be to keep our family safe, and we may even be able to lend a hand to others. 
On the downside, just because the power is out, that doesn't mean you can sit around and play on your Switch. With a power station, you might still get stuck needing to run the vacuum. So I suppose everything has its drawbacks. Do you have a power station or are you in the market? What would you use it for? Share your ideas in the comments. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if this info helped you out. If you are a regular on my channel, I appreciate your support and I'd like to wish you happy gardening.